Hello everyone. This is our video on the organelle mitochondria. As you can see, we'll cover where it is located, the overall structure of it, and how it aids in cellular respiration and what cellular respiration is. Let's get started. So first of all, mitochondria are held in the cytoplasm of the cell. Depending on the cell type, there can be many, many mitochondria for the cellular needs. For example, red blood cells do not contain any mitochondria, while muscle cells can contain hundreds or even thousands of mitochondria. All right, now what do mitochondria do for us? Now part of the goal is to get energy by breaking down glucose in order to get ATP as seen over here. ATP is the energy currency of the cell. Think of the mitochondria as the factory that does this. A good analogy would be thinking about something such as wheat. No one's going to eat just wheat for energy. It has to go to, go to a factory to be, to, be confer, to be converted into flour, oatmeal, things of, of that nature. Think of the wheat as glucose and the ATP as the food that we can eat after it's been processed. Now is the structure of the mitochondria. First of all, we have the outer membrane. It's a part that interacts with the cytoplasm and the rest of the cell. Next, we have right here the inner membrane. This inner membrane is selectively permeable. It only allows specific things to go in and out of it, into the matrix and into the inner membrane space. The inner membrane space is the space between the outer and the inner membranes. The matrix is the fluid and everything that's held in the inner membrane. Now, the matrix holds special things such as ribosomes and mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is important because it is the, one of the things that makes us believe in endosymbiotic theory. This theory is covered in more detail in our uh, video about eukaryotes, but the main idea is that mitochondria were a prokaryote, which was engulfed by another cell, and the two uh, developed a symbiotic relationship with each other. Next up is cristae, which is the folds in the inner membrane, right here, all these yellow lines that you see. These cristae are to increase surface area. Now, why would you need to increase surface area? Because in the folds of these membranes, in the membrane itself, are enzymes called ATP synthase. It's what is used to actually generate ATP and is why mitochondria is so important. Next is cellular respiration. What's the purpose of cellular respiration? Well, here's the overall equation. C6H12O6, which is glucose plus oxygen, yields carbon dioxide, water, and 36 ATP plus um, a byproduct of heat. The main goal here is to create ATP from glucose. ATP holds the energy that was originally stored in glucose. ATP can be used to, to do various functions around the cell. Now, this 36 value for ATP is large. In science, most things don't always go according to plan and things aren't 100% efficient. Most of the time, the cell gets less than 36 ATP per glucose molecule. Now, over here we have the parts of cellular respiration. Now, I'm just going to do a brief overview of each of these sections. First of all is glycolysis, the actual breaking down of glucose into smaller components pyruvate right here, but that's not super important for this. Next is the Krebs cycle, also called the citric acid cycle. You use the smaller components made from glucose in order to create what we call electron carriers, which are seen here. These electron carriers are used in what's called the electron transport chain. Now, this is the main part that goes on in the mitochondria and why the mitochondria is so important. The electron carriers are used to harvest tons of ATP. Look, when you break down glucose, you only get 2 ATP. When you use the Krebs cycle to make these electron carriers, you get 2 ATP. But when you use the electron transport chain in the mitochondria, you get about 28 ATP. That is a lot in comparison to everything else. And that concludes our lecture on mitochondria. Thank you.